Okay, I've links to all of the gear in the video description, and especially these plugs. Um, they just keep out producing the others for me. And at the end of the video, I'm going to discuss this uh, tide chart and how it impacted the fishing this trip, especially when you look at the plot to the left, that flat spot with the yellow bars around it. Um, yeah, that really dictated how this bite went. And, uh, and as always, um, if you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you're not a subscriber and you like this content, please subscribe. All right, this is Southwest Florida, and I've got a windy morning, um, and it's been cold three days in a row. Um, water temperature, 61.6 degrees. You see that cooler up on the front of the kayak? I was actually going to go sheep's head fishing um, because it had been so cold, and uh, you know, even looking at the tide chart, um, I knew I wanted to get out ahead of that flat spot on the curve that we'll talk about. But before I went to the sheep's head spot, looking basically for some shelter, I couldn't resist making some casts across this. I'd never fished this before. It looked good. And I also had this, I kind of had like a breeze behind me. I could have a pretty nice little drift along here. So you know what? With this plug, you can cast it a mile. Um, I figured, let me just kind of fan cast this and cover this water. Just you know, see if I would raise anything. And I wasn't too optimistic, especially for snook, because uh, the water's cold. Um, but Hey, this is going to end out up working out really, really well. And this plug is a Rebel Jumpin' Minnow. Uh, yeah, you know, I used the Spook uh, Junior, the Super Spook, and um, this has just been out producing it for me, so I'm staying with it. And looking at that rod action, boy, I want to slow it down. It, it looks like I'm working it too fast, but, you know, I'm looking at the plug as it's coming in, and the plug looks great. All right, your second cast. Uh, so this is a decent red, but more importantly, what it's going to do is it's going to cause me to go back up and make this drift again. And, um, you know, I've only been doing this kind of fishing like six weeks at this point. So the next one's going to be a personal best. And uh, it's a real nice one. I hope to beat that sometime soon. But, yeah, this is the fish that um, got me to keep making some more drifts over this. And, boy, it's really going to pay off. All right, the sheep's head fishing can wait. Uh, definitely going to do that drift again uh, after getting a decent fish. You can see I'm pedaling lightly. Uh, I'm in reverse. I'm trying to keep that fish from pulling me into the area where I've been hooking up. I don't want to spook whatever else is in there.
That's some power. All right, the hooks that come with this plug are really bad. Um, luckily, they've I've changed them. I've got VMC number one hooks, uh, model uh, 9626 on those hooks. Damn, that's a heavy one. Yeah, uh, that's my best so far in the short time I've been doing this kind of fishing. And uh, yeah, forget about the sheep's head. Um, looks like this is going to be a redfish trip. I'm going to go run that play again, get back up on that. Right, even with that glare, uh, I've got good polarized glasses, salt lights, um, I can see that fish coming. The folding net kind of worked against me a little bit there. Um, I like this net though. First of all, the rubber net's much better on the fish, doesn't take the slime coat off, and uh, you tend not to get the hooks caught in them. Uh, so this is a good net. Uh, I just need to be a little careful about the whole folding aspect of it. So with this wind whipping around and uh, getting this slight chop on the water, not really the best um, top water conditions, but this plug really works well despite these conditions.
I was a little surprised that a snook uh, hit in the open like this in this colder water, but uh, okay, I'll take it. And I pinched the barbs down on these hooks, so uh, they should come out of the fish easier. It gives me all three species for the morning, and uh, I haven't actually been out very long. Right, and as good as that bite was, it shut right down. And uh, yeah, this tie chart explains it perfectly. If you look at that flat spot where those yellow bars are on the plot, look to the left of that where the plot is rising uh, between 6 and roughly about 9 a.m. Uh, that's when I was catching fish. That was actually, I was out there, it was about like 7.15, 8.45, something like that. Uh, as you saw, it was a really good bite. Um, and then when I hit around 9 o'clock, where that flat spot is, yeah, that was it. It shut right down, had no current, fish wouldn't hit. If you look to the bottom of the graphic, where you've got the daytime and, and high and all that, and you look at those red marks where the red bars are, you'll see that from 8.49 a.m. until 11.07 a.m., there was no uh, tidal change. There was no basically no current. The fish didn't feed. Um, when that bite shut down, I started moving around a little bit. I could see redfish. They just would not hit, and it's just so classic. Um, I did not fish the other end. Um, when it started rising again, I didn't have time to, to stay out, but I'm glad I got out there early when that current was moving. And, uh, you know, you look at these plots, and it really tells the story and how it works. All right. I hope you enjoyed that. And, again, if you like this, uh, please hit the like button. And if you're not already a subscriber and you like this content, please subscribe.